Today we are taking a look into the RS Mega Plus motion system. As the installation process will take you some time, we will split this review into two parts. Hi, I am Stoyo and welcome to my garage. Today two relatively large and somewhat heavy boxes arrived rather quickly. So let's open them up and see what's inside. Let's start with a more square box. Another box. Inside you can find a nice looking kill switch. Looks nicer than on pictures definitely. And a Thanos controller. Looks quite good finish as well. USB cable with ferrets and that's it for this small box. Now oh, we have some cool stickers. Nice touch. And then we have these beauties here. They are pretty well packed as you can see with a lot of foam in between. Let's see how it goes. They come pre-assembled with this nice powder coating. It's not that heavy as it would seem actually. We have one. We have two. Some more four. 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 Now we have three. And then... What a surprise, we have a fourth one. That's it for this one box. Now let's open this not so square boxy box. Be careful not to cut yourself. In all the hurry and excitement, we remove the lid and we find some spaghetti. Let's see what we have here. Quite thick cables. These should be actually the actuator cables. They look pretty long one. These are the data cables. Spare power supply cables. One, two, three. Expect somewhere there is the fourth one. Don't see it. Some more data cables. More data cables. Some more serial cables. Here is the fourth power supply cable. And now we have a lot of small boxes. Let's open up one of those. See what we have here. Everything is quite well packed. Here as well. Looks a little damaged, but it has good packaging. And here we have one step on motor. Quite heavy as well. But not that much as I expected. Here is one. Of course we have three more. Some are here. One. And four servo drivers. Here are they. Two more motors. Of course, as expected. And the final servo driver. And that's it for the second box. So now that we have everything here laid out, it looks like to be a lot of things. Let's try to assemble now one of the actuators very fast. Following the instructions, we have to remove these bolts here. Of course, this is where the motor goes. We won't expect something else. It's quite a long bolt. The coupling is with vibration damper of two parts, pretty nice touch, remove it as well, bearing assembly is really smooth. You can see it's almost like 90% assembled, even the mounting bracket is here. You can see actually the mounting bracket lower part is fixed to the actuator end, so this gives us very low stack. 
the total added height of these saturators is really 5 cm as advertised. Let's check this quite fast. Yes, it's even below 5 cm, which is nice. Very low well center of gravity as well. Very low well profile. So now let's assemble the first motor. We should slide this part of the coupling. It says to slide it about 2 millimeters below the end point of the motor. It should be right about over here. Yes, it's even less than 2 millimeters. So somewhere here below the edge should be fine. Now we just have to tighten this part of the coupling. You know, tighten till it breaks, then rotate back half a turn. We're not doing this, of course. This should be tight now. And now we just have to assemble. It would be a opportune moment if you decide on which side you want to route the cables. I will be trying this way first. So now we just pair those two together. So I did carefully. They should not touch all the way. It should be about millimeter of space. This looks to be about a millimeter. And now we have only to put the screws back on. Of course the first one is always the hardest, as you can imagine. It will take some time, but not that much. Let's go on the opposite side now. Now tighten all the way in on the opposite sides and you're done. As you actually have the actuator on your table, I would suggest to check if everything was properly tightened before you put it on the rig. This one apparently is. No issues still here. Yes, everything is tight. You can check here as well. It's worth mentioning here that all mounting hardware is high quality, 10.9 tensile steel. So that's it. You have assembled your first actuator. Three more to go. Repeat these steps three times and our actuators are assembled. So you have a very good decoupler which has vibration isolation inside it has some soft rubber i have the same on my 3d printer it works miracles you also have this pretty thick and big damper on the bottom it's actually quite a lot of rubber so it should be doing a good job as well the weight of a single actuator is a little below the advertised 7.5 kilos Let's open up one of the servo drivers. This is one big stepper motor driver. It's a notorious white version that has even better properties than before. So I guess pretty soon we'll see how exactly it behaves. Let's check now on the tunnels controller. I really hate unpacking this stretch folio. Either I rush things and scratch the things below, or it takes me forever. Let's try it this way. It has a rather professional look. It features a metal box. It's not one of those 3D printed boxes that you are used to seeing around the internet. It's the 6 channel version as well, so it provides some future proof extension. So that's your Thanos controller branded with the Racing Labs logo. Also has these handy brackets on the back side which can be extended so it can be mounted on some flat surfaces or whatever. So that's the controller. And this should be the emergency stop of course. It looks rather nice in person. 
again some aluminium on the box the plastic ends not much to it pretty thick cable so that's your emergency stop If your rig features some kind of supports like mine, the installation of the actuators is a pretty simple job. As I had a total of 6 supports on my rig, it was quite easy to slide them around and provide place to mount the actuators. The hardest part of this step is actually to slide in the T-nuts into the slots. Once you manage to do so, simply tighten the 4 screws. The bracket openings are pretty tight, so it's very easy to vertically align the actuator. Now that both back actuators are in place, we have to simply wall the rig from both sides and the back end is done. As you can see here, I reconfigured my rig by sliding the seat mover a little to the front. Thus, I will have a more center mounted seat position. It is little tedious to wall your rig with the supports, but it's the fastest way that I had available. When you lower the supporting feet all the way down, you will be able to move them around or remove them from the rig altogether. In my case, the front supports were in the way, so I had to remove them in order to mount the actuators. I simply slid the back supports to the front and lowered them at 6 cm. This allowed me to remove the front supports altogether and provided enough space to mount the front actuators. Same procedure was repeated in the front and I had all the 4 actuators mounted. As you maybe are aware, this is not the best position to mount the front actuators as they are quite far from the seat. Mounting them behind the steering wheel column will give you a higher pitch angle and ultimately much better immersion. In my case such mounting position was possible but I had to rearrange my whole shifter cluster which I didn't want to do currently. Simply opted out for front placement which gave me a total of 1 meter and 10 centimeters between back and front actuators. With the finishing touch of closing all the T-slot channels, the process is complete. Installations of the four actuators certainly take some time but it's quite an easy process. If your rig is lifted from the floor, it's as simple as just sliding them in place and lowering the rig on the floor. As you can clearly see, the black and red high quality powder coating finish has a great appeal in itself. For now, we can call it a day and in the next video we will take a look into the cable installation, software configuration and how actually the system will behave. Thank you for watching and see you next time.